Madam Chair, you are live. Thank you very much. Evening, everyone, and welcome to the March 28th, right on cue, 2023 meeting for Arts and Public Places. Um, we are beginning at 7.04 p.m. And if you hold on a moment, I will shush the news. Joe, go ahead and do a roll call. Uh, David. Present. Jim. Hi. Cynthia. Here. Lynn. Present. Joe is present. Genevieve is present. <laughs> uh, and then Krissa and Barbara are not present. <clears throat> I'm here. Yes, thank you. <laughs> My dogs are present as well, but you know, it's okay. Oh, uh, <laughs> can you put one in your lap so we can see it? Actually, I just, <laughs> I just put them in the other room so they won't bark it's again. <laughs> but at the end, during open discussion, I'll bring them because they'll probably have plenty to say so they can bark mm. and, and chat. Good. Especially <laughs> if me. <laughs> and then Mika can join too, Lynn. <laughs> I was going to say they can say hi to their cousin too. Yeah. Okay. Um, were there any questions or concerns on the agenda for this evening? I did want to say thank you to Joe. Um, I had sent him an email requesting that we have a uh, agenda, a proposed agenda that shows all the details of what we're going to be discussing and to also send along copies of the um, proposals that we are going to consider tonight. Um, and again, thank you, Joe, that was very helpful. Sure, all of that was forwarded from Genevieve. <laughs> so I'm, ju I'm always thank just, the, I'm, I'm always just the, the messenger. <laughs> okay, well, you're a good messenger. Um. Everyone in favor of the agenda tonight, please say aye. 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 Go ahead, Joe. I'm just gonna well, say, I'm just gonna say you I'm just gonna say you made a motion. Made a motion. I made a motion. Yeah. Anybody second the motion? Yeah. Okay. I'll second it. <laughs> Everyone approve the agenda. Say aye. 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 Thank you. Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay. Agenda. Are we is going to amend the agenda to include um, these last minute requests that were not on the original agenda? No, because it's a spending vote and we can't do that last minute. It has to be open for public review and comment. I'm glad I'm not the heavy. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. <laughs> they didn't need the money till July anyway. Thank God. So we're good. So, yeah. Um, okay. Uh, did everybody have a chance to review the minutes? Did anybody mm -hmm. have any? Questions or concerns on the minutes? I don't want to talk about it. You don't want to talk about the minutes. No. Okay. Um, do we have a motion to approve the minutes? I'll move. I'll second. Thank you, gentlemen. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. Minutes have been approved. Joe, we can send those to the city. Thank you. Will do. Right, so let's move on into Poet Laureate. I believe Cynthia will be presenting the update because Lucky Barbara is traveling in Egypt. Uh, yes, hi, good evening. Um, Maggie sent me an update and she wanted me to uh, share the current events for the April uh, month of April and for the National Poetry Month, which is starting April 1. Sunday, April 16th from 3 to 5 p.m. at the South County Arts Lab. She's been invited to do a reading. Uh, all is, are invited to attend. Saturday, April 22nd between 11 a.m. to 3 at St. Luke's Episcopal Church. Uh, she's also doing a reading and attending their Earth Day Arts Festival. On Sunday, April 30th, uh, between 2 and 4 p.m. at the William Peka House, she's attending and um, doing a reading for Sunday Social, Poetry in the Peka Garden. Uh, it's open to all from 2 to 3. 
Uh, and, um, you know, if people can try to attend, um, there is a $5 cost to attend this event in the Pekka Garden. Um, and she's also this year, once again, doing um, the hidden poems where she's hiding more poetry downtown. And um, she's, uh, it's gonna be more towards the top of West Street. So she is also focusing on Ego Alley and downtown Annapolis for the hidden poetry program. Uh, so she's looking forward to being a part of the selection process for the next Poet Laureate. And um, we'll be getting any further updates when Barbara's back in the country from Egypt. Thanks. Have a nice spring. Thank you, Cynthia. Um, any questions or comments based on the Poet Laureate update? So she wants to re uh, reapply for the Poet Laureate for next year, apparently. Is that correct? She's on the selection committee, so she would not be eligible. OK, so it's going to get cool. Thanks. And by the way, she was fantastic. What a great, energetic Poet Laureate. Uh, bravo to, to her service. Cool. Definitely agree. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yes. Sorry, hold on just a moment. Um, for gallery updates, I was just pulling up information on the gallery. Um, the Heritage Harbor Senior Center is going in at um, City Hall, and that will be in that gallery there. And then um, Yoli Avils is at uh, Pitt Moyer currently. And we'll have um, a discussion later on the promotion and marketing of the gallery events and the options that we have. So we'll touch on that later. Anybody have questions or comments about the gallery? Okay. Um, proposed mural updates. Um, I, I don't have anything currently. Uh, we will have a presentation later in new business from um, Bannerka Douglas regarding a mural project. And so I will wait to let her present that. Joe, do you have anything on grants? Uh, nothing specific, but I'm, I'm kind of, um, Jim, you sent me the information from the State Arts Council stuff, which I appreciate. And I think we're just going to map that to once the RFP process for um, Bestgate goes out a little bit, we can more concretely start kind of um, crafting um, kind of the language for the planning grant and the implementation grant. So um, it's coming down the pipeline, but not nothing concrete right now. <clears throat> Any other comments on grants from anyone? Okay. Um, public outreach updates. I did have, um, I have a mutual friend that works at PRS Guitars and he reached out to me to discuss, um, um, Paul would like to have a more of a presence in Annapolis again. He'd like to revisit where the roots of where he started his business. So he is talking about, um, originally was talking about putting some art in or something um, regarding the birds, which are on the the, the fret of um, all of his guitars. And it's kind of his um, solo signature logo. And we just kind of discussed back and forth uh, the process, how they would apply they would come and do a presentation. Um, they have to, you know, get permission from the building owner. They were thinking possibly Ram's head, whatever. They, there's nothing concrete yet, but just letting you know. Um, but they also were interested in discussing um, the music pavilion that we're trying to get in at City Dock with the redevelopment team and see if there's a way that they could help us ensure that um, it is like a proper pavilion for us to have our stage shows. Um, they are willing to help 
promote markets. Um, there was no talk of money. Um, they're not offering money to provide for it. So, but possibly because of using their name, um, they're willing to use uh, down at City Dock in the art as well. Um, any anything that uh, represents PRS as far as their again their birds and and stuff for sculpture or possible mural stuff. So. Uh, it's just kind of an ongoing conversation um, and connecting them with the redevelopment team with City Dock, and they can further discuss that. They're hoping that maybe they could um, invite other shareholders to come because we do know if we want to put something actually official in there for a proper stage that we will probably have to find the money for it. Um, so it's uh, just a continuing conversation, letting you guys know that they are excited about the possibility of having music there and um, helping possibly even, he said, um, maybe uh, booking talent to come, some of their artists that they work with. So it's kind of exciting. So we'll see where it goes. I'll keep you guys updated on that. Um, anybody else have, oh, go ahead, David. I think uh, Lynn had a hand up first. Okay, Lynn. Um, can you restate your comment about if we want a pavilion? Did you say if we want a pavilion, we'll need to pay for it? Did you, did you so say I said a, a proper performance pavilion. So there is a difference right now. What they have sketched out is not like a proper performance stage where you would have a festival or um, concerts. So in the proposed right now, it's it's kind of more like um, a flat space with a propose of a um, pergola above it, or oh. or a possible ship bones, you know. So it's it's. So are they in the design phase now? They are still in the concept de design phase. Oh, they're in the concept phase. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. We need to let them know what we need. Yes. And exactly. We do not have to pay for. Right. Well, okay. I, I would like to think that they won't, but I'm so used to finance going, how are we going to pay no. for that? No, 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 no. They're, 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 they, no. We should not have to pay for it. It should be included in the cost of okay. the improvements to city dock. And it's, it's not our responsibility. It should not be our responsibility as a commission yeah. to find the funding. And so, um, and, and, and if it is, then the city needs to work with us to submit whatever um, applications need to be submitted. But but right. it, it should not it should not be on us to to um, to to provide that funding. But if we, they are in the concept stages, then we need to write a concept paper yeah. so that they know exactly what we want. I agree, and that's yeah. We definitely need to be part of the conversation. So. Um, David. Um, you. Yeah, you kind of sort of already answered my question. I was wondering, I know that, you know, Paul Reed has been integral in the music community for a number of years and has a number of contacts. I just wanted to know, you sort of answered my question in terms of what we have maybe access to some of his, uh, his uh, sort of Rolodex, so to speak, um, in order to maybe get, you know, depending again, obviously, if we get a stage that is, you know, that is representative of a, a large group or, or a popular group want to come and perform, then we would get access to, to his Rolodex of books. But you sort of answered that question, which would be great if we could do that, because I know he knows, you know, a lot of people who use his guitars. That would be that would draw a great audience here in Annapolis. So Exactly. Yeah, it would be interesting. Cool. I just... Are you done? Yeah, I'm, I'm good, Jim. Thank you. Take it away. I just had a question. <clears throat> well, first of all, a comment. Um, Genevieve, I hope you mean by a better size stage, the per the the sort of canopy thing that is in People's Park is just too small a performance stage. Exactly. Um, yeah. It's yeah. really, it's almost not even suitable for a speaking stage because it's so low. Yeah. Um, and I know they had some reasons why they did that, but I don't think they were really a good design. Uh, it's very pretty, but not very functional. Um, so I'm hoping that when they do the stage at City Dock, it's big enough to hold a band. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, and I'm not, I can't, I'm not a stage expert, but there are people who could be helpful in talking about that. And it doesn't necessarily have to be covered 
but that's another issue. Um, the second thing I wanted to do was to make sure that um, the commission members um, received an invitation to the Arts District's networking party, which is coming up on Thursday uh, from five to seven. And you're all invited. It's going to be at the PRISM, the PRISM um, Hall on um, 47 Spa Road. Uh, and we will have refreshments. And there's not an agenda. It's just come and introduce yourself and have a good time and rub elbows with a lot of other artists and art managing people. Um, so I hope you get a chance to come and sort of get to meet each other and chat. Jim, who sent out that invitation, that email? Uh, it was sent by email. Um, and if you like, I'll resend it to all of the board members. Yeah, I just, I don't, I don't have okay. that. You could I'll send through. it maybe right now. <laughs> if I there you go. It. No, tell me like the present. No, I, have, I, have to do, I have to do it on the computer I'm yakking on. Sorry. You can multitask. I have faith in you, Jim. You can do it, man. I'll, I'll do it after the meeting. <laughs> All right. I could try that. Hmm. You can do it, man. You can do it, Jim. You can do it. can do it. I know I can do it. I got to figure out where it is here. <laughs> uh oh. Anyone else on public outreach updates? All right. Great stuff. And I'll I'll make sure that I uh get together with the redevelopment team and discuss that stage ASAP. Um, and Lynn, maybe we can draft something up. I was gonna say, I'm happy to, to draft up a letter. Um, Fabulous. And, um, but I guess I'll need some help because I'm not a expert at stage. Well, I happen yeah, to know yeah, a few people, people, so but yeah. Maybe if there's one someplace that we know we might, yeah, that's another thing is you can use um, examples elsewhere of outdoor um, stages and yeah. um, anyone has yeah. photographs, then that would be yeah. awesome. Yeah. Uh, Chris, Chris can recommend a few similar okay. stages. Oh, yeah. Perfect. And I'll, I'll send them over. Yeah. And, uh, but, uh, but I do want it in writing and yep. in order to be submitted to the, you know, to the planning team so that and more than just a conversation. Exactly. And, I uh, agree. I, no, I want in writing. We would want yep. in writing that, yep. that, yeah, their commitment to working with us to make sure yep. that. Yeah, I did inform them that, you know, PRS is interested in working with them too. So um, the conversation has started. So let's do the concept letter as a follow up. So perfect. Thank you. Okay. We'll move on to the budget. Uh, did everybody have a chance to review the document that was sent out for the budget? Um, I didn't actually have a great chance, but I'll forego talking about it for now. Okay. But I do have, do, do we have enough money to pass out tonight uh, for the three proposals that were on the agenda for? There's four proposals. Yeah, there's currently um, $25,000 that's available for spending tonight. Oh, we could have a party. Okay. <laughs> it could be a decent party, sure. Um, a good one for that. Any questions or comments on the budget? I do think seeing the, um, you included the Google form mm -hmm. with the invoices, that's also super helpful, just to kind of, for me anyway, to see what's kind of coming through the pipeline. <clears throat> just break it down a little bit more. It, I find that more easily readable. So thank you. Yeah. Was this was this what you're talking about? So that's yeah, yeah that's the invoice one that Joe was just talking about. Yeah. So um, when I okay. get the when I get the invoices and submit them, I do that. But the the other is the actual report that comes from city finance. I don't believe I always say this and then I sometimes find it, but I don't believe I've received it. So if you got that, you definitely got the budget because it was in the same email. That link that was in the email that you printed out, oh. there's an attachment with the the city budget report. So all right, I'll try to find it. No okay. worries. I'll okay. I'll write everybody a nasty gram if I don't like something in it. Okay, cool. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, so we have $25,000 to spend tonight. Um, when I spoke with finance, there's supposed to be another um, round of payments coming in. And she said she was hoping that that would um, be reflected by May. So if that's the case, then that would basically be um, the start of our fiscal year 2024 funds coming in, um, which would allow us to have another um, vote in June, at the end of June um, for funds, because there'd be more funds there for us if, if, in, if we spend all of our money tonight or, you know, um, hopefully it'll be replenished. Um, and then um, there'll be another payment again quarterly like after that within the fiscal year 2024. So yes, Lynn. So I'm looking at the document and I'm trying to figure out where we show that we have $25,000 to spend this evening. Okay, yeah. So it, it says that there's 132,619 on there, but with our previous votes, we have invoices that are still coming out of that amount, as well as um, the 50,000 that we set aside for Westgate Circle, the 30,000 for summer programming, and the 10,000 for um, maintenance of sculptures and murals, and the 15,000 that still has to come out for the Songwriters Festival. So after you deduct all of that from what they show as our available balance, after all that stuff is invoiced and taken out, we still have $25,000 to spend tonight. Okay. Can you put that in writing for us? Yeah. It's in the spreadsheet with the link, the Google document that's attached. I'm looking at the Google Doc. And it's down on the bottom. Scroll all the way down. I'm at the bottom. It's, the, it's what's highlighted in yellow. <clears throat> I found it. Is it 2023 detail? Is that what I'm looking at? No, no, no. So that's the that's the budget report from the city. In the email, there was a Google document link that okay. I detail all the invoices that have been um, oh, submitted okay. for payment. Oh, I see. Okay, okay, got you. Yeah, yeah. What Jim's Thank holding you. up there? That's helpful. Okay, I okay. see that. Can you read that? Thanks, Jim. <laughs> it's the one with all the the names and phone numbers that you don't want me to show on the screen. So. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. So that's, no, it's it's okay, Jim. We can't read. It, but <laughs> okay. Hey, don't knock my computer. It's all good. Any other questions or comments on the budget report? So where do you get twenty five thousand? <laughs> so you take the one thirty. To and some you take the 130 and you take away um, the outstanding invoices, which are highlighted there, as well as the the film festival money is going to be invoiced and come out. And then we had three votes that um, we allocated funds for the Westgate Circle, which was 50,000, for um, the summer programming, which was 30,000, and 10,000 for maintenance and repair. So after you deduct all of that out of what they say is available, we have $25,000 to spend tonight. Okay, I follow now, okay. Sorry. I know, it's it's fun, it's fun bookkeeping. No, it's, it's fun, not fun. Fun with numbers. <laughs> um, but like I said, when our next quarterly payments come in, then, um, we'll have some more funds, hopefully. So we're waiting for that to happen. <sighs> I'm sorry, I raised my hand again, but- Yes, ma'am. Uh, so Go there ahead. are new people organizing Juneteenth this year. Have we reached out to them? So- um, They reached out to us. I They haven't submitted an application yet. I did um, tell them that here's the application. I sent them the link and they had to fill it out, but we haven't received anything yet. Okay, so okay. Can you can you forward me their contact information? Yep. And I'll follow up with them because it's getting close and it is. Yeah. I will send it over to you. Okay. Anything else on budget? 
All righty. We will move on to new business then. Um, the first presentation that we have this evening will be Eric Evans from the Annapolis Arts District. He sent in the proposal and everybody received it and had time to review it. It's for um, the opening event for the David Hayes Summer Sculpture Garden over at the library. So Eric, go ahead, you have the floor. Thank you, everybody. Um, now I just want to reiterate uh, the invite that Jim Martin had uh, mentioned earlier. Uh, I'd love to see you guys all at the uh, networking session that we're having on Thursday for the Arts District. Um, and it's open to anybody um, who appreciates the arts in Annapolis. I know all of you guys do and put a lot of time and effort into it, and I appreciate it. So thank you very much. Um, tonight, I'm talking, I'm talking about the sculpture garden that uh, the Arts District um, is building at the library. So as you guys know, uh, we brought about 15 David Hayes sculptures to Annapolis about a year and a half ago um, during COVID, and we placed them throughout the city. Um, so we had them in Eastport and Hillsmere and through the Arts District, Clay Street, Maryland Hall, et cetera, um, so that everybody could experience public art um, in their neighborhoods and outdoors during COVID. Um, we made an arrangement now to bring all of these sculptures together for one last hurrah. Um, they're going to be here through the summer, and we have located, we're in the process of locating them all at the library in West Street. Um, we've got, I think, 12 of them moved there this week. We have three more to go um, to get them all to libraries. So we'll have 15 sculptures there. The interesting thing is talking with the library, just putting the one sculpture there um, forced the library to create an arts policy, which they did not already have, um, which resulted in one of the libraries in the northern end of the county getting its first mural. So we kind of help jumpstart the discussion on the arts, which is really cool. So hopefully this will now get the library to think about how they can use that wonderful outdoor space they have um, by putting and creating what I believe is our first kind of public sculpture garden um, in Annapolis. Um, we do have some sculptures you know, spread out throughout the city. We're lucky to have that, but uh, to have 15 in one garden, I think is uh, gonna be unique for us. And they're going to be there through the end of the summer, and then they're going off to their next exhibit. I think they're going somewhere in the southwest. Um, so on April the 15th, we are going to host a community event um, to bring families out to see the new space in the sculpture garden. Um, we are going to have uh, music that is geared to families of all ages. Uh, some of the bands will focus on kids music, some you know, for general families. We're gonna have story time for the kids, we're gonna have crafts for the kids. Um, we're gonna have poetry readings and we're gonna have some food trucks at the library. Um, so the idea is just to bring community together to see the sculptures in one location and get the community thinking about um, how the space could be reimagined uh, going forward in the, in the long run. So we're asking for your support to help make this uh, party a success. And I appreciate your guys' consideration. Do we have questions yeah. for Mr. Evans? I do. Go ahead, Jim. Uh, what time will the event be held? Um, it's from nine to two. And there'll be food trucks, live music, and kitty events. Uh, yeah, so there'd be arts and crafts, uh, story time, uh, music, and poetry. So there'd be something Ooh. for the whole family. Okay, sounds good. So uh, I guess my question, hi, Eric, how are you? Uh, Excellent. I guess, cool. My question is, I see, it's basically a festival, it looks like. Um, is the money to go for everything, or is it just for the music, is it for the crafts, for the story time, for the food, for the it, it's it, it goes towards a little bit of everything. We're not charging anything to anybody um, so that it's, you know, it doesn't matter um, who comes, that they can participate and do crafts at no charge, they can listen to music at no charge, story time at no charge. So it's a free community event. There's, there's no money being made at, at this event. Very cool. And the musicians, I mean, how many groups do you have, or do you, I mean... Um, we have, I believe it's three music groups that are be performing um, throughout the, the morning into early afternoon. I think the event's from about nine to two. 
Um, so we'll have several different bands that will be performing. Uh, Any idea who they are? I mean, can you share who they are? Um, yeah, let me uh, pull it up here real quick. I'll tell you who all is performing. So um, the morning starts off. We have yoga at nine. We have kids music by, uh, by Doug Segree uh, using his uh, music from Squirrel, which is a uh, kids music band. Then we have story time at 11, followed by poetry, followed by fiddle music with Gary and Leah. Then we have another story time. And then we have jazz music from the Kirst duo. Cool. Oh, awesome. Cool. Thank you. Gary so, and Leah live, live across the street. From me. And uh, the Germantown <laughs> Homewood Association um, uh, <laughs> has been instrumental in helping us kind of get the word out. They're very excited to see this project in their community. Um, so when we reached out to them, they were extremely excited to see this happen. One uh, of the things that the Arts District discussed, because uh, I serve on that board also, uh, so I can't vote on this, but I just wanted to say um, one of the things that we discussed is this is a an attempt to develop a permanent sculpture garden with bringing in different artists periodically um, to fill it. And uh, hopefully uh, the library will find that a, a really good idea. So this is a good attempt to expose the library to a lot lot wider audience. Yeah, we have one private donor who's considering purchasing a sculpture um, to be the first uh, sculpture at the library. Uh, the library <laughs> decides to go for it. Um, there's a pretty good chance that's gonna happen. So um, a nice domino effect is happening. Cool. Thanks. Lynn, did you have a um, oh. oh, Okay, go ahead, Joe. That was me. That was me. Um, so first I just drove by there. I'm, I mean, I live right down the street. So uh, it was very cool to see all the um, sculpture coming together and that immediate vision of what a sculpture garden looks like uh, is kind of exciting. And I, I think that's a cool conversation um, that that has initiated. Um, and yeah, that's like new territory. There's there's a lot that goes into that, but it's a cool conversation. Um, my my question about the event is, um, what if uh, what component of it or what opportunities are there to for people who want to know more about the David Hayes content? Um, like, is there somebody or is there access to materials, or is at some point during the day somebody sure. going to say some stuff about so the, the artist sculpture. Uh, sure, so the artist's son uh, will be in attendance um, and there's QR codes at the sculptures, um, which takes you to our website. And from there, you can actually watch, there's a PBS documentary about the artist. Um, so you can watch the documentary if you like, um, after you scan the QR code, or you can just go to the Arts District's website and we have the uh, link to the documentary posted on there if you don't want to wait. Yeah, one of our one one of our board members is very familiar with the family and has worked with David Hayes over many years. I'm sorry, excuse me for interrupting. Hi, Eric. It's Lynn Barrow. Um, this is a great idea, and I think when I've been driving by it, and I each time I drive by, I'm like, is there is there more? there than there was last time I drove by it. So um, so I wondered if you were doing any media around it. So um, I was waiting till after tonight to do a press release because I wanted to make sure I included you guys. So there, there's a positive forward thinking. Uh, we also just got permission uh, last night to put a sign up at the library um, announcing that it's a uh, summer sculpture garden, public sculpture garden at the library. So as people drive down West Street, um, they will see that there is a sculpture garden there besides the, uh, see the sculptures, they'll see the sign and realize that it's temporary, um, which was so maybe help encourage people to have that debate on uh, how could that space be used, whether it's sculptures, you know, 
there's several sculpture gardens in DC and I used to work in DC and I used to love going after work to concerts in the sculpture garden and movies in the sculpture garden. Um, I think we're a city that uh, loves its murals. And, you know, I think this would be a way to get us to maybe think about something else besides murals for a change, that there is more than one form of public art. Nothing against the murals. I help fund some murals, though, but uh, I just think it's nice to have some yeah. uh, variety. I'd love to add, like, a sculpture update in our, our old news and not just mural updates. That would be fun. Cynthia, Cynthia. Have you Eric, I just want to thank you for, for all your many years of hard work and uh, your efforts to enhance the arts and culture of Annapolis. And uh, you are really to be commended for many years of uh, your very hard work. And I also want to thank uh, Jim for recusing himself. And uh, thanks for presenting, Eric. All the best. Thank you. Well, recusing would mean he didn't discuss it at all, but he's going <laughs> to abstain from the vote. So that's great. <laughs> you can't shut me up, but you can make me keep my vote. In. Exactly. So he's going to abstain. So that's great. Go ahead, David. I'm trying to think about how to wait, how to present this question without throwing the negative juju on there. But uh, is there an alternative date in case the weather doesn't cooperate with you? Shame on you, David. I know. I'm trying to. Act, I try to just rescind your invite to the networking session. Oh, no. <laughs> um, no, we've made arrangements with the library that we can move into their community room if the weather is bad, so we can move it indoors. And the nice thing about the new library, it's loaded with windows, so you can still see the sculptures. Um, the other thing is the sculptures won't melt, so if you decide to go outside during the rain, um, give everybody umbrellas. That'd be great. Too. That'd be perfect. That's right. Maybe we just need a little extra donation uh, from somebody that happens to <laughs> have David Hayes umbrellas or public art in Annapolis umbrellas. There you go. Cool. All right. Cool. Them. Thank you. Well, there's a fundraising idea. Hmm. Yeah. Art public <laughs> places umbrellas. Thanks, Eric. You're welcome. <laughs> or ponchos. <laughs> ponchos, too. That'd be great. Yeah. Um, anybody else have questions for Mr. Evans? Okay. Thank you so much for presenting and uh, we will have our vote later and we'll make sure that you get the notice of decision. Thank you guys so much. Thanks, Eric. Thanks, Eric. Next on the agenda, um, we have the Banneker Douglas Museum March on Washington mural project. Thank you, Julian, for bringing Chanel forward. Chanel, you have the floor. I'll let you go ahead. Good evening, everyone. Um, sorry, let me just get my screen in order. Can you see me? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, no. Hi, everyone. Um, greetings, Madam Chair and members of the commission. Um, I'm going to give a brief uh, description of um, the proposed uh, mural project. On August 28th, 1963, a quarter of a million people marched on Washington, D.C., demanding fair wages and economic justice, voting rights, education, long overdue civil rights, protections and an end to segregation. The March on Washington for jobs and freedom in the nation's capital had civil rights leaders take the podium to issue urgent calls to action that still resonate decades later in 2023. The March on Washington reenactment uh, will take place on Saturday, August 26th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. The March on Washington reenactment begins at 10 a.m. at the Navy uh, Marine Corps Stadium and will travel to the Annapolis City Dock. Uh, this project, um, excuse me, sorry. Uh, the, um, following the reenactment, there will be a formal program including video presentations of original participants, uh, guest speakers, an award ceremony, and a community mural activity. 
The community mural will be led by public artists. Many of you may know Nikki Brooks, who most recently uh, completed a large scale mural for the Severn Community Center. Nikki will work with youth from the Banneker Douglas Museum Youth After School Program at Robin Wood Community Center and March participants to create a mural that celebrates the 60th anniversary of the March on Washington. The mural will later be installed at the Banneker Douglas Museum for public viewing as a continuation of our current exhibit, The Radical Voice of Blackness Speaks of Resistance and Joy, that will be up until September 30th. After which the mural will be included in our museum collections for future traveling and on-site exhibitions. The requested funds will support the artist's honorarium for her planning, design, and installation, in addition to supply costs. The size will be an estimate of six to seven feet long. The goal of this project is to bring people together through the power of art, make an exceptional piece of new artwork, and to memorialize the past in this important time in Maryland history. Thank you. Wow. It's amazing, it's wonderful. Thank you so much. Do we, um, we'll open the floor at this time for any questions or comments. Maybe I missed it. Did we get a, a, a visual of what the mural may look like? Did I miss that? Is that was that part of the... Uh, in it, that's a great question. It is a part of the artist, artist honorarium um, to design the mural, but I can pull up um, some examples of her work and, and okay. send that to you. Um, but again, she um, um, was the community artist for the Severin um, uh, Community Mural. Let's see if I can. Yeah, it would be great if we just get some samples of Nace or Lisa, um, some wireframes of what she's thinking. Or does she have an, a concept in mind or? Um, there's no, well, it's going to be visuals from the March on Washington. Okay. So that's going to be a, the theme. There are a million and one um, stock images uh, from the March. So she'll be using that as like a visual reference. I'm just going to share my screen real quick, if I may. Please I don't do. know if I'm allowed to. Um, okay. So here's Nikki's work. Uh, this is from, oh. Sorry, I don't know if you can see my screen. Um, yeah, we yeah, we got you. Okay, so this That's is her. Um, and she, this is her making the mural. Um, this is um, at Severn Community Center. Um, she's a micro graduate. Uh, she received her MFA in visual arts. I don't know, this is a little blurry. Um, let's see. Um, Wow, she has quite a repertoire. She does. Um, she's exhibited at the museum before. Um, she's a full-time um, art teacher at um, Prince George's County Public Schools. Um, Okay, that's cool. Here's some of her work. She also does a lot of installation work. Oh, um, I know, I know her. I met her at the DEIA conference. Yes. <clears throat> cool. Yeah. Let's see. She's really cool. Yeah, she's um a really good painter. Thank um, you, This is great. And the concept, you said that the that the that concept is a part of her. Yes, it's going to be a part of her payment. her, her payment. Mm -hmm. right. um, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, this is going to be a privilege to support support this this artist. Um, oh, should I stop sharing? Yeah. Should I stop sharing? Yeah. Oh, stop sharing. Sorry. We are televised. <laughs> okay. I'm like, oh, I don't want you to see too much of my work screen because it is crazy. <laughs> but thank you. 
And then the piece, so it's going to be a floating piece. You're doing it down at city dot, correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. And then um, will it be installed at Banneker afterwards or? Yes, it will be installed at the Banneker Douglas Museum for public viewing um, until the end of our um, exhibition, The Radical Voice of Blackness Speaks of Resistance and Joy, which ends September 30th. And then it will be processed into, well, as soon as it hits the museum, gets to the museum, it's going to be processed into our collection. Any other you, questions? You said there's a series of events leading up to that, right? We're meeting at the Naval Academy and, and some other things that are going on. Yes. So the um, and I can send um, mm -hmm. our sponsorship package, um, but the March on Washington, it's it's going to be a weekend event. Um, so the, um, kickoff will be, um, Saturday, the 26th with the March and, um, Sunday, August 27th, there'll be a activation Sunday where Maryland pastors are asked to dedicate their morning services and the reflection of the March on Washington and a culminating, um, worship service will be held at Fresh Start Church. Uh, England Bernie. Cool. If you could just send a list of your activities, that'd be great. Uh, yeah. That'd be perfect as well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Now, thank you for bringing this to us. Um, I think this raises our profile too, just because it is a statewide project. And uh, so we appreciate you asking us to, to be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, I know that Nikki is a well-known artist in Maryland and she has done artwork in other places also, but um, she's very respected and I think it's really neat. You're right, Lynn, it's really, it's good for us to be behind this in every way. Thank you for bringing it to us, Chanel. Thank you, thank you all for your support and encouragement. It means a lot, thank you. What what date was the march? The 26th. The 26th? Mm -hmm. from okay. 10 to 4. Yep. 10 to 4. Mm -hmm. And it's from where to where? The Naval Academy um, to um, the stadium, right? To the city dock. Oh, I'm sorry, Naval mm -hmm. Marine Stadium. Yes. Um, to the uh, city dock. Good. Okay. Sweet. Any other comments or questions? No, ma'am. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Chanel, for coming tonight. Thank you. And we will send out a notice of decision after our vote. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you all. Thank Bye -bye. you. Sorry. Good Lord, have mercy. Um, I'll unmute myself. Annapolis Pride is up next for the Pride Festival live performance support. Um, we have Eric Lund here tonight to present. You have the floor. Go for it. How's everybody doing today? Um, I just want to thank you for giving me your time tonight. Um, so Annapolis Pride will be having our third annual Pride Parade on uh, June 3rd on Saturday. Um, we have a little bit of things going this year. If it's okay, I'm just going to do a quick share of my screen. I just got a few slides to show you um, about what we're heading and what we're thinking about doing this year. So uh, let me see here. Do, 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 do. So does everybody got, can see the screen? Got it. Okay. Um, there we go. 
So as you know, Annapolis Pride, we started in 2019. Um, we then uh, had our first, Annapolis's first Pride Parade. It was kind of more of a success than even we were anticipating. Um, and uh, we were hoping to follow up the next year, but then of course we all know what happened. Um, so just last year we had our uh, second annual Pride Parade and we're going for the third. Um, each year we seem to have gotten a little bigger, at least the, the two times that we have. And we tended to start pretty, much at the top too. We were having little, you know, battles with a, did we think we met the St. Patrick's Day Parade, parade which is traditionally one of the largest ones in the town. Um, so uh, just real quick, I do have just a little quick spirit video because there's something uh, in it I want to show you. Too far from um, and I know that it took me a very long time to feel comfortable coming one of the things we do is we promote ourselves as a family-friendly event for the whole town. Um, many of the parades are based around drinking and partying and stuff. We try to expand it a little more. Um, so the one thing I would like you to notice is both in the foreground and the background, how many families, young people we have. Ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered here today in the presence of these witnesses to join Lisa and Brittany together in civil matrimony. Where's Eric? I now pronounce you married. So obviously we are a point of celebration in, in Minneapolis. Um, you're not supposed to know this right now, but um, our theme this year is Express Yourself, uh, up, uh, Uplifting the Youth of Our Community. Um, that is not the official logo. That's going to be released at a, at a theme party release. Um, but uh, following in line with that, we wanted to move into expanding our access towards uh, young entertainment for young people. Um, we would like to have a kids uh, and um, family corner where we would have target more specific entertainment for young people, um, street performers, um, storytellers, um, you know, some jugglers and some uh, basic entertainers in that regard, and some uh, children's uh, song singers and um, uh, entertainment in that regard. We're hoping maybe to possibly, we just recently discovered that Dolly Parton's um, uh, book project uh, to give away free books, the, the Imagination Library now has an Annap or, uh, Anne Arundel County chapter. Um, so we have been in contact with them talking about whether we could get a storytelling and um, some events worked around that. And we'd like to hire some uh, actors who would be, wouldn't just storytell, they would perform with the thing. Uh, our standard performance spaces are of course, People's Park, Weissman Park and the Calvert Courtyard. Uh, I would like to emphasize, you are right, that stage is not big enough and we wish it could be bigger. <laughs> it's like we have had that for the past two years. Um, but uh, as well as us growing with, um, with our targeting more of uh, the family entertainment and stuff and growing in that area, we are also physically growing. Um, we are going to be expanding possibly into the Gotts Lot Circle Lot in the back. Um, and last year for the first time, we did use uh, the spot behind Ram's head. And we are now also looking to go into the spot behind the Truist Bank, which is the other parking lot um, right next to it over here. Um, uh, with that, we are hoping to also expand our opportunities to have some local performers um, playing uh, music in both of these sort of these back areas and not just in the main play areas. Uh, so we've been looking and started communicating with a group of very of diverse um, artists. Some are local regulars. Honey Soul with a Pretty Academy um, is uh, going to be helping us also with our uh, AV and our technical support. Um, but they are going to be performing along with Pretty Academy's uh, students. Um, we'll have a couple spaces on the band. We have some new ones this year um, coming in. Uh, they are all local based in some way, at least in the Anne Arundel County area, if not living in Annapolis. Uh, Leon uh, over here in the lower right um, is a non-binary performer who's actually starting to get some traction. Um, and uh, he uh, uh, lives in the Annapolis area. Um, and 
I can't go on without talking about uh, the hot topic in many other states right now that we started the first drag shows in Annapolis um, and some of our drag shows have gone on. Um, uh, J.B. McClendon, who is um, a local who was born and raised in Annapolis and still lives here, um, is now one of the main performers in the Kinsey Six, which actually does regular tours of Puerto Vallarta, Key West, and so I'm hoping to get into Rehoboth soon. Um, they uh, travel quite literally throughout the world. World. They've traveled to Europe and everything. And this year we are hoping to have um, Miss uh, Gay Maryland, who is um, Amethyst Diamond, uh, will be joining us this year, which I think is sort of exposing our profile a little bit on the stage. We are people, the other two pride parades, Baltimore and DC, are taking notice of us um, and that some people, you know, in the community, I've heard little anecdotal things of people going, well, what if you conflict with one of the other pride parades, I'm going to Annapolis. So, <laughs> so we're, we're kind of hoping to keep building on that. We have a little bit of an expanded talented list from this year, like I said, because of the expanding into new spaces and some of the more targeted uh, things we want to do with some of the kids entertainment. Um, so that's up to our request from last year. Uh, we're at 55 this year, um, but I think that would all be put to very good use and be throughout the town. These are tentative right now, I have to be honest with you. Um, so there is possibility that some of these will swap out, but um, we're sort of looking at this range to be a group that um, we feel could cover and fill the festival the way we would like it to be filled. <laughs> As I said, the future, we are hoping this year, I just wanted to say, regardless of what happens with this, um, we have expanded our board now. Um, we had a great, Jeremy laid amazing, Jeremy uh, Browning, our founder, laid some amazing seeds. Um, and he handled a lot of the work himself the past few years. Um, and he's handed it off to however, he's built a team now and handed it off. So now we have more of a team and some other minds involved in thinking up our future events. Um, we're already talking about doing gallery showings with um, Annapolis Pride sponsoring and um, highlighting LGBT artists and stuff in the area. Um, so that's something we want to look forward to in the future. Um, and we now have a little more of the bandwidth to um, help handle some more complicated events throughout the year. So I hope we'll be working together more on that too. Great. That's that. Yeah. Thank you. It was wonderful. Do we have questions for Eric? When you have a, a, a sort of a close to final list of what's going to go on during the uh, event. I can email you all that. And I can you email, email, email you updates if you want me to. Yeah. And if you need all of our emails, you can email to me or to Genevieve. And it's on the, also on some of it that's on our website. Cool. Hmm. Eric, just a quick question. And I'm looking at the form you're going to add. Uh, so children's entertainment is new this year. Can yeah. you give a little more detail about what kind of children's entertainment you have in, in mind? Uh, we're working with a company that does all, all sorts of like everything from just juggling acts to storytellers um, to s groups that come in with a, um, you know, like a two or three actor, you know, small contained performance, like a 20 to 30 minute perform, you know, storytelling performance. Um, we're working with them. We're also hoping to use them to sort of seed the parade a little bit with a little more razzle dazzle for, for the kids so that they're not just watching politicians walk by. Um, so, yeah, oh, you know, we'd like to give them some visual um, entertainment that can then, that they can then meet you know, in our fa in, in our kids zone, uh, you know, later in the, in the parade and during the festival. Um, and that does include sort of a lot of the standard from uh, magician, you know, um, up close magicians. Um, it's like I said, storytellers, um, jugglers, some, you know, general street performer types. And were they included in your list? Uh, yes. Your list is pretty small, so I didn't get a chance to. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. There's actually, and just so you know, we have, we are very aware of using local talent as much as we can. Um, and any funding, we sort of did this last time, any funding that we do get from 
this council will go specifically to the local artists. And if we need to augment, that will come out of our general operation. Mm -hmm. um, the company that we're working with um, is actually kind of a clearinghouse. He's actually kind of an agent for those type of performers. And um, we've already asked him, and he's based in Maryland. Uh, so, and, and we said, we like to stick to performers who live in the Annapolis or at least Anne Arundel County area. And he's like, that is no problem. I have plenty of them, so. Cool. Excellent, thank you. Good. Eric, can you just say real quick, um, sometimes it, it helps give perspective. Can you just give a sense of what your overall budget is for the event as a whole? Um, as of now, yeah. we, we cut it a little close. We were a little behind budget last year. Um, I think we hit up to, I, I want to say it was like 62 um, K. Um, but like I said, we kind of blew it a little bit last year um there was a lot of last minute things that we were doing um mm -hmm. so we have a little more fundraising going on this year um that uh we have a couple more we have extra dedicated people who are pulling in some extra fundraising so we're hoping to augment with that um a lot more this year um, thanks yep. <clears throat> you also know that that we go live so you just totally spoiled the theme release I know. I, it's like, I, I, I'm like, I, I, I don't know how popular you are on YouTube. There are millions and millions of listeners. They all know what's going on. How many people are it's over now? It's over. It's don't over. Worry. over. It's all on Twitter right now. So that, yeah. is not, that, is not the, uh, that is not the actual graphic. That's just something stolen from the internet. But, um, but we do have the artist working on the actual graphic, which actually is something else I wanted to ask you guys about. We have internally on our own, put up a stipend and we did a little bit of a sort of our first test year of just inviting a few artists to submit work and the winner would get um, would get a stipend for being chosen to this year's artist. I don't know if that type of contest and stuff is anything that fits within your purview uh, of stuff since it does end up on a lot of things um, uh, to something to do. There's something to think of next year going forward, if that is a possibility. I don't know if that is falls within your budgeting purview. Ugh. Just just don't offer them 10,000 bucks a pop. No. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I, I think we could do that. Um, Eric, one last thing. Um, have you found an alternative to throwing candy out at the kids in the crowd? <laughs> actually you can't throw candy we actually can't yeah that's the thing that they're, they're kind of we can hand it out now yeah. but like like at least as long as we've been doing it they they were very strict that we could only hand it out that we could <laughs> whatever <laughs> there's flags and there's oh yeah we got the flags and, got some... yeah there's all kinds of stuff that gets handed out yeah mm -hmm. cynthia we don't have jurisdiction over Freedom Park, the old Whitman Park. Have you already um, applied through the uh, county parks and rec uh, for the use of Freedom Park? People's Park. The People's Park? Yes, yes, People's we already Park. have. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, because they handle the, the um, adequate public facilities and the security. Yeah. Uh, where did our uh, part of our logistical engineers is uh, Eric Evans. So, <laughs> so he's, he's sort of helping, he, he's crucial in helping us make sure we do everything. Um, I actually did secure the uh, permits though for, for the parks and the spaces. Mm. Great. Any other comments or questions for Eric before we let him go? Thank you, thank you, thank you, Eric. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. I'm sorry, I'm, I yep. miss this. I miss the Pride Festival every year because I have another event that weekend. But um, it's it sure seems like a fun time. Yeah, it is great, and the community that comes out is just absolutely amazing. So, okay, well, that's it for our presentations tonight. Um, we will open the floor to discuss first the um, application for the David Hayes Summer Sculpture Garden opening event. I will open the floor up if anyone has um, wants to start the discussion. I move that we um, fund the application at the level of the request, which I believe was $2,000, sorry. Correct, it is $2,000. Um, 
for the David Hayes Sculpture Garden at the Annapolis Library and the festival uh, to accompany it. Second. Joe, do you want to do a roll call? Uh, yes, uh, Genevieve. Aye. David. Aye. Joe, aye. Jim. He has abstained. Oh, that's right. I have. I have Sorry, I'm accused myself. Yeah. I know. I'm so, looking. I'm looking at the. Yeah, I'm okay. doing two different so things. Going down the road. Yeah. yeah. Jim has to uh, abstain because he's on the arts district board. So. Yes, Cynthia. I. And Lynn. I. Motion passes. Uh, five to zero to one abstention. Thank you, Joe. Okay. Next up for discussion is the March on Washington mural project presented by Chanel from Banneker Douglas Museum. We have the floor open for discussion if. And that's that's also 2000? It is, it's the ask was for $2,000. I'll move to approve $2,000 to support the March on Washington mural. Second. Thank you. We'll do a roll call vote, please. <clears throat> uh, David. Aye. Joe. Aye. <laughs> uh, Jim. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's an affirmative aye. <laughs> okay. Uh, Cynthia. Aye. Lynn. Aye. And Genevieve. Aye. Motion passes unanimous. Fabulous. Thank you, everyone. Such a good project. It is. It'll be amazing. I almost mm -hmm. feel like that that she, the gal is a really great artist. She's really good. I'm interested to see the like concept it. they come up with in terms of gathering those photos and making a collage of that, plus her interpretation should be cool. And I She's do like that the project has an afterlife, like it goes into their permanent collection. I like that. Yeah. It's fabulous. Nice. Mm -hmm. Next on the floor is consideration of the $5,500 ask from the Annapolis Pride for the Pride Festival oh. Live Performance Support. The floor is open for discussion if necessary. If not, do we have a motion to support? I would need that we support the uh, Pride Festival request. For the full amount, Jim? Yes. Okay. Do I have, I'll second. And that was how much? 5,500. Yes, yep. thank you. <clears throat> and go ahead and do the roll call vote. Okay. Um, Cynthia? No, I would vote for half of that amount, 2,500. But I think for a one day event, we've been spending a lot of our budget on one day events. And I would like to go for more permanent type of installations of art. So that is a no. At that level, yes, it's a no. Okay, Lynn. Aye. Genevieve. Aye. David. Aye. Joe, aye, and Jim. Aye. Uh, motion passes, five yes, one no. Thank you, everyone. All right, we will send out the notice um, of decisions, Joe, okay? And um, this brings us to open discussion. So before, um, I think she is still with us. She was traveling home. Yeah, she's still here. So before we open the floor for open discussion, I'd like to introduce our um, new director, Rosalind Johnson. And uh, Julian, if you bring her forward, we'll let her introduce herself and chat with us. Good afternoon. I'm sorry, my car switched off when um, you were speaking. So I'm Rosalind Johnson. I'm the new director here in the city of Annapolis, and I look forward to working with you all. I want to thank you ahead of time 
for making Annapolis, for helping to make Annapolis look so amazing. Um, when I drive around, walk around, I see all the murals, I see all of the paintings, the artists being highlighted, particularly at Pitt Moyer, but other places as well. Um, when I drive down the street, I see installations. Um, and it's just really, really nice to see. And it just makes you smile and it just makes you feel happy when you see it. So thank you for all of your hard work and for supporting artists um, in, in the city of Annapolis and beyond, but it's especially in the city of Annapolis. Well, Thank you so board, much. It's lovely to meet you virtually. Right. <laughs> welcome. Welcome, 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 welcome aboard. Welcome, yep. welcome aboard. Thank you. At this time, I'll open the floor for open discussion. Anyone have anything to share? Genevieve, did we have the other vote on the, um, the, there was the other item on the agenda about, um, oh, yes. funding so for advertising. Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> so, um, it was suggested, uh, that we advertise in the Capitol newspaper, um, our galleries and there's a gallery section that is published. And in order for us to be included in that column, in the Capitol, it is $150 a year, um, their calendar year. So it's not January 1st to December. I'm, um, and in the information that I sent out, she told us um, the uh, running calendar year, as well as she gave us examples of the <clears throat> column that is published. Um, I told her I would bring it to the commission for discussion and we can decide if we, feel that we want to pay the fee of $150 to help promote both the city hall gallery and as well as the Pitt Moyer gallery. Is this going to be in both the print version and the digital version? Yes. And I would suggest that we make a, a tagline of some kind that says um, funding art in Annapolis, just so that people understand what the Art in Public Places Commission does. Yeah, we could probably um, work with her on like how we're described, how our galleries are described, make sure that it's um, aware that they right. are free public open galleries. Yeah, I guess, I mean, it's only 150 bucks in light of the money we already spent, but is it, I mean, is it worth it? You think it's worth the, the squeeze to promote? Well, she did send the information about viewership and subscriptions and, you know, um, it is one of the most read papers still for local news okay. and events happening. Um, and it would give us an extended version, you know, not everybody's on social media and that is basically, mm -hmm. you know, even though we do have a thousand plus, you know, like outreach with our events that we create on social media, um, it may bring in more art-minded people to come to the gallery because it is listed with all the other gallery openings and displays. So I think in that avenue, it would be helpful. Yeah, it's only 150 bucks. I'm just curious just in terms of, yeah. you know, and I guess if it sucks, we don't like it next year, we can not do it next year. Exactly, it's renewable and it's not automatic renewal. So mm -hmm. when it comes time to renew it, if we don't see the benefit, then we could decide, you know, then which, which way to go with it. Cool. So it benefits us and it benefits the artists. Right? Obviously, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I think for $150, it's definitely worth it. Yeah. Totally agree. And I also like what you said a minute ago, Genevieve, about like it recontextualizes those galleries as part of a wider, it's yeah. like a very visible place that integrates um, those galleries into other arts stuff. So I like that about it as well. <clears throat> and is this um, a monthly calendar that will be repeated 12 times or mm -hmm. I mean yes yeah okay yeah that's a heck of a deal <laughs> all right then I'll make a motion to support uh, supporting our art oops Cynthia has a question go ahead Cynthia Audrey Lee um, is the curator of our galleries and is it also part of her responsibilities to do um, outreach on social media and to publicize um, the, the receptions and the 
and to put more press out uh, pertaining to the uh, exhibits. Wouldn't that be part of her purview? So she's paid a she's paid a monthly stipend. I think Lynn needs to hear uh, how much um, per exhibit she's currently being paid. So she gets two hundred and fifty dollars, and it runs every two months um, per exhibit. Audrey does. Um, she compiles the press releases. The press releases are sent to. Um, the mayor's office for communication, as well as to recreation and parks. They post on their social media and then um, arts and public places posts through myself uh, on Instagram and Facebook. But Audrey doesn't have um, the rights to manage any of our pages because she's not a city employee and she's also not a member of arts and public places. She's just a contractor that we have to do the gallery installs. So she does not do the online marketing, but she does give us the press releases and the photographs and everything to use. So we, we could put this ad on Facebook and with other information and, um, yeah. and Instagram and TikTok and yeah, so um, I do have a member. I do have a digital um, subscription to the Capitol. So the Capitol does allow you to um, digitally download um, articles and columns on there. So I could download it and then repost it on Facebook. And then that way, anybody who doesn't have a subscription to the Capitol can read it. And you can send it to individual committee members as well? Yes. To yeah. reshare as well? Yes. Right. Okay, so there you go. Good. Go ahead, Cynthia. I thought Audrey Lee was going to be coming to one of our meetings and giving a presentation. She will. But this is a voting. This was a spending meeting, so I didn't have her scheduled for that. So she can come next month. Do we have a motion on the floor? What What is what is Audrey Lee going to be doing? So Audrey Lee is our gallery coordinator and she has been, and she is the one that curates and hangs the artwork at both the city hall and Pitt Moyer. Okay. Um, I just want yeah. David, did you, David, did you make a motion? I was in the process, but Cynthia had a hand oh, up. So I okay. wanted to hold off until okay. uh, questions were addressed. Okay. Okay. Anybody else for discussion before we make a motion? Okay. David, do you want to make a motion? I make a motion that we uh, subscribe to $150 for our, for our publications, for our exhibits, for Pitt Moyer and uh, um, City Hall. City, City Hall, thank you. I'm going to say City Doctors for a minute. City Hall. That would be cool. Let's add yeah, another right. one. Yeah. I second it. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? motion passes. Thank you, everyone. All right. Thanks for the reminder, Joe. I totally got wrapped up in open discussion there. So um, now the floor is open for open discussion, if anyone would like to. I do want to say then um, that the film festival this weekend was absolutely amazing. Um, I don't want to say it's the best one ever so far, but it was really amazing. Also, um, thank you everyone because our uh, logo was on everything and it was at the top header big right next to the city and right next to the Arts Council and um, next to the Maryland Arts. And so it was amazing. Uh, we got a lot of um, exposure um, with that. It was also in the print program and then they displayed it before every movie as well. It was up on the slides. So Everybody was well aware that we were there and, and in support, and it was great to finally be part of it outside of the volunteer base that we normally have been. So, um, are we using our the? There was a logo that was real colorful. Are we mm -hmm. using that one? Yep, that is the one that we use. Yeah. Anybody else? 
I guess have we gotten any research? I know the last time we met, you had your proposal for or well, your you know draft for the uh, for the every. Um, have we gotten a response or any sort of feedback from that whatsoever? There hasn't been, um, and it's set to be published in the Gazette. So um, we'll see if anything comes of that. But um, it was published in Naptown Scoop. Um, I did send it over to. Um, um, I just totally blanked another publication. Uh, I don't think they've chosen to put it in there. And then um, it has been up on the city website and I did post it as well on our Facebook page. It's um, it's there at the top, pinned to the top of the Facebook page. I believe I saw an early draft of it or, you know, a draft of it. Do mm -hmm. we have, do we have the, can you um, email that to me? Are there, whatever the current out. draft is. I'll send it out again. Yeah. And it, it is right there at the top of our page too, on, on the city website. I thought I saw it somewhere. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's right there. Cynthia. Was this uh, document modeled after how the um, Anne Arundel County Arts Council does their uh, grant applications? Or was it modeled after any other um, city in, in Maryland or any county arts council in Maryland or commission? It was what we proposed during our meeting and then Ashley took that and drafted it up to what would be acceptable per um, the city rules and our code. And so after the 30 days of publication, then it goes over to rules for the checks and balances. And then if it passes that, then it's presented to city council just so that they are aware that we're adding on to the code, a schedule um, of operation. Cynthia, what I'll say is that a number of organizations, um, be they government or philanthropic, um, only offer reviews of grants on a, on a cycle, on a, in a specific cycle. And so um, it is in line with um, recommendations from Maryland nonprofits and, um, you know, the Chronicle of Philanthropy and, and organizations like that. So we are not, um, we're not doing something that's out of the, the normal um, uh, grant making uh, processes. Not recreating the wheel? We definitely are not recreating them. I, I had some concerns about it, um, but I want to say that um, I've, I've discussed this with a number of people. The I think if we try to explain to people up front, uh, and it probably should be in the policy, um, that the purpose of having a three-month cycle is to allow the organization to appropriately plan what they're requesting and how they're going to spend it and to relay that to the commission. Um, and I don't know, maybe we need to modify our agreement, our um, applications, but uh, if that's really the intention, which I thought made a little bit more sense, I understand that. I'm really reluctant to tie us up for three months because now um, this group that came in to request funds um, for the Parole Health Center mural uh, is gonna be put on hold for three months. I don't know whether that works for them or not. It probably will, but I don't, I don't know that. Well, the, um, the, yeah, the actual problem with that application is that um, it has Jeff Huntington as the artist, and we have mm -hmm. already given him a grant this this fiscal year cycle. And our code only allows us to support individuals once per fiscal year. So um, they're not even eligible until our fiscal year funds, technically, till the new fiscal year begins on July 1st, 2024, which, I mean, 2023. Sorry. And which is when they said that they needed the funds. So it the stars might actually align and work out um, based on whether um, we have the monies for spending at the time that we can present the application. 
So the so is it is it Jeff that's uh, applying or is it the parole health center? The money would go to the artist. The parole health center is making the application through Terrence Wright, and his mother is the uh, the chief nurse at the parole health center for many many years. But the so, money, but the money would go to the artist for the mural. It's well, for it's for the payment to the artist. Exactly. Okay, but so the money is really for the health center, um, and how they spend it. Oh, do we have? Do we stick our nose into that? Because it's signed by. Absolutely. Uh, yes. Absolutely. It that's has to be spent. That's what grant making is. That's what grant making. Is. It has to be spent on free art, free public art. So yes, and it would be paid to the artist. Okay. To procure All the right. mural and the supplies, yeah, needed okay. for the mural. Good. Okay. And they've been told that, I guess. Okay. Yes, a response was sent to them and that um, they would be eligible after July 1st if they, and I also did explain if for some reason they changed the artist to notify us and let us know because it would change the application. Anything else for open discussion? my alarm clock going off, reminding me it's time to go to bed, Jim. I know. Cynthia? It's a very worthwhile project. I hope we can set aside some uh, funds um, to, to support them. Um, they're, you know, incredibly historic and quite a legacy within the community. Um, they are to be commended. Uh, I also have a question. Um, the list of city-sponsored events has grown and grown, and um, uh, the majority, or I, I would say perhaps 100% of city-sponsored events have fees waived. So um, when folks um, that actually would fall under the category of city-sponsored events come to ask, um, come to us for asking uh, for uh, funding requests, um, where where is that line drawn? Because they've just perhaps been um, given a waiver of maybe six thousand um, for their event. Uh, also, the office of the mayor has funding for these city-sponsored events. So I just don't want to leave us open to being, you know, accused of double dipping and uh, that kind of thing. Um, so I think we do need to delineate out which uh, projects or events are uh, city sponsored and which are commission sponsored. Hmm. Anything else? Do we have a motion to adjourn? I move that we adjourn. I second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Absolutely wonderful meeting. I appreciate you all being here. And we'll be in touch. See you guys soon. Yeah.